am Donna with New Love Goat Milk Products. We are a working goat dairy in the Texas Hill Country. We are located in Centerpoint, Texas. It's about 30 miles southeast-ish of Kerrville. Um, and we're out here in the barnyard right now. It's lunchtime, so we are hand feeding some of our baby goats. So what we do here on the ranch, we, uh, we're the largest goat dairy in Texas that operates without machines on their animals. So we're 100% hands-on, and we hand feed all the babies, and that's what they're doing right there. So they're drinking mama's milk out of a bottle. Uh, hand raising them keeps them comfortable being handled that way. When the time comes for them to be in milk, they are, it's not so stressful for them because obviously they've just had a baby. They don't want to be chased down, uh, but they're comfortable with us handling them and being involved with their lives. They spend about four hours a day in the barn with the goats. A baby goat drinks about half a gallon of milk a day. A good, good dairy goat produces about a gallon of milk a day. So there's plenty of milk for at least two babies usually. These babies are all between two and three weeks. Yeah, and this is about the age where they'll start um, grazing on their own naturally. About three weeks, you start introducing water into their diets, which you saw the drinking out of their water with yeah. their ears dripping in it. And um, they'll start grazing on their own about this age. And they'll usually, around six weeks old, we'll start letting them, we'll just open up that gate, and one day they just all follow the mamas out. <laughs> Goat herds, there's always a matriarch. There's a herd queen. Um, and within a herd as large as ours, you're gonna have several herd queens. Um, but some of the, the, the lower girls on the food chain, they're the nanny goats. And mama goats will leave the kids at home with the nanny goats and go out and graze. So it's really not, and a lot of people are like, oh, you take them for the mamas? Like, well, actually the mamas kind of leave them. <laughs> and we go out and take care of them while they're gone. So we do have some Alpines and Sonnens, one or two La Manchas, but mostly we have Nubians out here. They have the most butter fat in their milk. This is our little baby pen. This is where, when our, when our mamas have babies, we uh, put them in here for, you know, just a little while until the babies get up and kind of can run, I guess, and avoid predators. Yeah, you can see some of these were born last night. Some of those little babies in there were just born last night. A couple of them are only, Probably the oldest one, the one that's nursing now, is about a week old. And then we have, as you can see, you know, th this one pasture here is about 312 acres, and it's all pasture land. But yet I have this field over here, which is somewhat of a coastal field. It has a little draw that runs through there and holds water real well. So I uh, got one of my billies in there with a handful of the milk nannies. So that's uh, in our stair stepping of a, our breeding cycle of always having mamas come in to milk. We separate, well I guess I got 12 different little pastures and so I rotate them accordingly until they eventually end up down at the house to have babies. So here's one of the areas that was solid brush that I started here and kind of worked around this little curve clearing it all out. Uh, there's probably about, I don't know, 90 some odd head out here in this little, or in this bigger pasture. The other little pastures naturally only got 10 to maybe 30 at the most. Piles of brush, as you can see, we just cleared all this out of all the cedar to get some grass coming in for the livestock. But we don't want to cut all the brush out because yeah. the goats love brush too. So I kind of do half and half, half for cows, half for goats. Okay, so this is a survey of the land that was done. It's been a few years. I don't know if there's a year on it or not. I'm gonna go ahead and guess the survey was done around 2012. Um, this was the original Swayze Forest Ranch. It, it, now it's about half the size of property line is actually from here up. And uh, the Guadalupe River here it's a border for the north side of the property. Um, there's our little house and our production studio and our barn. And uh, my favorite part of the property is right in here. It's just really some raw land um, that's got, it's kind of hard to get to the river there. We have a lot of cliffs, but it's just uh, big, beautiful cypress trees and, and raw land. But yeah, here's our map. So with all the work that we put into it, which we do, we start at 5.30 in the morning, quit at nine o'clock-ish at night, 
every day irrelevant of weather uh, there's somebody out here working on the ranch we do take time to uh, enjoy the ranch as well which in my opinion is kind of like a new car you don't buy it to sit in the garage you got to enjoy it sometimes so we have about a mile and a half of the Guadalupe River lucky enough to have a couple of uh, deeper holes which is great for my boys more than anything they love to fish and we do a lot of swimming but uh Guadalupe River is pretty well spring fed from way up there above the uh, Ingram Hunt area comes down here and it goes all the way to the coast beautiful water pretty well the only thing we do with it besides it helping with wildlife is the fishing and the swimming and just playing in the water. It's a, it's a great way to relax in the afternoons, no doubt. We call this the soap house. So the new love soap house, we call ourselves the milkmaids. So there are four milkmaids all together and we work eight to five, four days a week. During the busy season in the fall, we're five days a week. Uh, but production right now is running Monday through Thursday, nine to five. So this is our soap room up at New Love. This is where we make all of our soaps. Christina is one of our milkmaids who likes to craft soaps with love. Um, these are our drying racks. It's kind of a neat sight to see. All of our soap, because we do do old fashioned cold process soap making, um, all of our soaps cure for six weeks before they're handled. So that's kind of the mold line where we pour the soap and make it. Um, it sits in the molds for about 24 hours, then it gets cut and placed on the drying shelves where it gets rotated. We use fragrance oils, super high quality. They're essential oil blends, um, but they're actually manufactured in Germany because they have a much stricter, the EU has a stricter skincare policy than the United oh, States okay. does. Very so good. all of our oils actually are manufactured in Germany. All right, now we're going to the kitchen. Janet is bottling lotion. So this is lotion in the making. So all of our lotions we make with fresh organic goat's milk from our own goats, and we blend it with raw, unrefined shea butter and organic sunflower oil. So it is all, again, focusing on good, clean, pure, high quality ingredients. Uh, and back to our, you know, we do everything by hand. We don't use any machines. So everything's hand poured, hand stirred, hand topped, hand labeled. This is how we do it. So this is, everything comes over here for labeling, and then after it's labeled, it goes into cabinets for storage. This is a fun room to photograph, I think, just because of all the lines. Um, but you have lots of lines. Oh, you have awesome. lots of rolls, yeah. This is kind of a packing room. So, yeah. And this is my mom's, so we actually use coffee filters because the soap can still breathe. Cold process soap has to be able to breathe. So we use coffee filters. So this is my mom's work. My mom comes in two days a week and works with us. So she does soap packaging. Mm -hmm. So this house, kind of a cool thing about this house, in the uh, 60s and the 70s, Mrs. Swayze, the landowner, would sponsor families from Vietnam to come over here and work the land. So this was her ranch hand housing for the Vietnamese families that used to come over here. So even this house has a little bit of cool history on to it, yeah. So this is where everything's made. Oh, oh look, look what's outside. We have, we have visitors at the soap house. Look what's outside. Most of this is our pastor's business. <laughs> like he and Trey decided they needed a business together. So they started Moo Love. Uh. <laughs> so uh, it, it really started a girl uh, contacted us that she wanted to trade a couple long corns for a bunch of bottle baby goats. So we made the trade and then the bug just took and they're like, oh, let's find another cow, let's find another cow. Well, one of my dreams way back in the days, I've always raised goats of different sorts and cattle, but I've never had longhorn, always wanted to. And I never would push myself over the edge to get into it and uh, Actually, the our pastor, John Hittema, here in uh, Kerrville, he, I think he bent my arm pretty hard, and we just decided to go into it a little bit together, and he's, he's gotten involved with it a lot more, And but it's fun to watch your pastor come out and take a break from, you know, doing his job, and he comes out here and he gets to relax and enjoy his cows, 
Uh, his wife comes out, and of course we sit down and have a glass of tea and just get to talk and visit. So it's a good excuse good to a uh, good relationship to have, uh, not only as a, a pastor but also as a friend, a good friend to have. Yeah. We got five hunters here. All five of them, some of them have been here for nine years. All of them are associated basically at one time or another with the Texas Park and Wildlife. Now, almost all of them were in the coastal division and still are, uh, but we built them a hunting cabin here about four years ago and we uh, come out here whenever the hunters come in, they, they're from the coastal area, so they bring shrimp fresh fish and we sure have some good meals as part of our entertainment having the good hunters up here yeah we have a lot of little get-togethers they all got kids so all our kids some of them have been raised together and share birthday parties out here and a lot of fun majority of the hunting that we do is a, a control hunting which would be getting rid of the hogs we're lucky enough that the neighbors next to us over here, they, they help with hogs as well. Uh, and sure, we, we shoot a certain amount of deer for our own cons cons consumption, but hogs destroy land, especially your fields. You can go in there and grass gets hay or whatever you may be planting, get up a couple of inches and they'll come in there and just totally reroute the whole thing and just, they can knock out acres of land in one night. So, been many a nights, me and John would get up in the middle of the night, jump in the vehicle and just ride out there and uh, get them out of the way. Butcher probably all of them, and we share them with uh, members of the church and share the meat. A lot of people get the, the blessing from it and a blessing of getting them off the ranch. And we have lots of wildlife, lots of deer, and lots of whitetail. Naturally, we have uh, quite a few axes as well, turkeys. We uh, started a program here, I guess last year, no, it's been two years now, trying to reestablish quail, Bob White quail. And uh, we have already seen coveys of quail that have made it in the last year and a half. So uh, we're starting to see more quail out on the ranch. And we have deer feeders, uh, which is basically geared towards the hunting part of it. But I have also taken time to put out four protein feeders that we pretty well keep something in them to uh, help all the wildlife. Uh, a lot of the middle, the end of the summer months get pretty rough up here, dry. A lot of the white tail are, you know, getting ready to have babies. Yeah, so we try real hard to keep protein feeders up so the mamas have something to be able to feed their babies with. I check on all my livestock every day. There's not a pasture or probably an animal that I don't lay eyes on daily. And you just never know when one gets hit by a rattlesnake or, you know, and if, and if I can see the difference from day to day, I can react a lot quicker, a lot easier. Whether I can save the life or not, I, I've got a better chance the quicker I know about it. And, you know, we, of course, we have our own sense of uh, accomplishment, but I'll stand up for the next person that's making product out of goat milk or, or, or beeswax or raising their own. I understand that they're putting out effort too. Uh, not as many people doing it like in the older days where my grandmother would make soap and she would actually trade it to her neighbors for whatever they had abundance of, whatever it may be. Uh, back in the old days, you know, that's what they did. They helped each other. Landio, land is opportunity. <laughs>